What's up, YouTube? It's me again, your boy, T Boogie. Uh, on the eve of another Sabbath day, sun will be setting here on the sixth day, about another 30, 40 minutes, which brings us into a new Sabbath day. Uh, salute to all my brothers and sisters in the faith, the true Hebrew Israelites. The sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I salute you. Those who uh, would be true servants of the Most High. For he and he alone is worthy to be praised. Again, the title of our lessons, False Prophets, Jack Leg Preachers. Uh, you know, everything that we do, everything we've been given in these last few hundred, few Few hundred years, a few thousand years after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, a lot of it has been falsehoods. And a lot of we've been given a lot of it uh, by these so called pastors and teachers and preachers uh, who dare call themselves reverend. The Bible teaches us that that, that, that that name is only reserved for one and one only, the Father. You know, you got these people around here calling, you know, that little funny looking man sits over there in Rome, Holy Father. The Bible said there's none holy but one. Jesus even told you that. So how in the world can this person call himself the Holy Father be recognized as a Holy Father? Or how can these people teach you, call themselves to be pastors and reverends and ain't giving you the un unadulterated word of God? You know, uh, these jokers, you know, they're, they're supposed to be preaching the word, the truth, from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. They only going to they want to start over in, in the middle of the New Testament. How you gonna know what a book is about or what a story is about, and you start and you only take a few scriptures out of the middle of a book? You hadn't bothered to read the book from the start to the finish, but then you are gonna come up with these man-made doctrine, these man-made traditions. And like I told you before, if you, if you stay with me, we're going to go on the journey. We're going to be dealing with all this stuff. These pagan holidays, uh, these jack leg preachers, these people tell you that the law has been done away with. If you miss my four-part series on the law, I, I, I will you know, ask you to go back. Because everything that we do, everything that we are, is based on the law. You know, the Bible says, you know, to fear God and keep his commandments is the whole duty of man. That's the only reason why you're here. To serve the, the true and living God. Not that God that they've been telling you about. That blonde haired blue eyed God. Or that God that tell you. You can eat anything you want to pray over. But that's that's that's, that's going to be laid at the feet of these jack leg preachers. That's going to be laid at the feet of these pig meat eaters. These jokers that tell you that Jesus nailed the law to the cross. That's going to be laid at their feet. And we finna get into it right now. So <clears throat> with that. I'm going to get into it. First. First. Uh. Uh. Part of the scriptures we're going to be reading is in Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23, we're going to start in verse 1. Now, I'm going to try to keep this tight and keep it right. You know, uh, I don't like for the lessons to go over 30 minutes, but, you know, some things we got to get into. So, with that, I'm going to start reading, and uh, we're going to go back and review what we read in Jeremiah the 23th chapter. All right? And I read, Woe be unto the pastors. That destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. Ye have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. That's a stern warning and a stern promise from the Most High to these jack leg preachers, the ones that's telling you about money. The ones that's telling you talk speaking against the law. That's a stern warning to y'all. Very stern warning and a promise from the Most High. He said he gonna, he gonna get you. He gonna get you. And he gonna recompense you for what you've done to his flock. To his children. Teaching them these lies. And these pagan holidays and these traditions and commandments of men. He gonna deal with you. So get ready. Continuing. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries where I have driven them. And I will bring them again to their foes. And they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them that which shall feed them. 
and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Couple of things in that, that part of the scripture. He said he gonna raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall rule and prosper in the earth. Think about it. In the earth, not heaven. Continue. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Wait a minute now. You mean we ain't saved now? We ain't saved right now? He said, in his days, when he reigned and ruled, when that righteous branch reigned and ruled, Judah shall be saved. And not a day before. And Israel shall dwell safely. And, and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore the days come, therefore behold the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought the children and led the seed of, of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all the countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Those people that dwell in the land now, they ain't the true Hebrews, they ain't the true Jews. You notice they don't call themselves Israelites. They know they're not Israelites. They call themselves Israelis. Or as one of my other Hebrew brothers say, Israelites. Israel ain't dwelling, even those people over there now ain't dwelling safe in the land. They fighting every day. So how can the righteous branch, the Lord our righteousness, be over there reigning and ruling? And they fighting every day in the Holy Land. Come on, people. All right? Continuing. Verse 9. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and a man whose, whose wine has overcome because of, of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of of swearing the land mourning, and the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. He talking to the pastor. He talking to the prophets, or you so-called bishops, you so-called apostles of the day, even back then, that's robbing the people. How are you robbing the people? You ain't teaching them the truth. You robbing them of their eternal soul. You robbing them of, of, of eternal life. He said the, the, the land is dry. Dry from what? Dry from the truth. He said it's full of adulterers. We got pastors here in town, all over the country, sleeping with everything that's moving in the church. Some of them sleeping with little boys. Some of them sleeping with little men. But they dare call themselves reverend. How dare you? Reverend, continue. Both the prophet and the priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found the wickedness, saith the Lord. Again, he said in his house he found the wickedness. In the church, he said the prophet and the priest, the pastor are profane. We see it every day. We got we got one one of one of these so-called big time preachers down there in Atlanta. One of them sleeping with little boys, snapping pictures like he on the runway at a at a at a at a, at a dog old fashion show with these little tight muscle shirts on, having to pay little boys not to snitch on him about what he doing. You got this other joker down there talking about he all non titles ought to be shot in the head. In the name of Jesus. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking about. This dude says, this fool said, all nine times ought to be shot in the head and buried in a mad grave after they say, one, two, three, Jesus, they're going to shoot him in the head. Come on. Verse 12. Wherefore there, 
way shall be unto them as a slippery as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. I have not sent I have also seen in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and in the hap and the inhabitants of Gomorrah. You got these preachers around here now today, strengthening the hand of evildoers. Another another pastor down here. Built his church with drug money. Drug money. Strengthen the hands of evil doers. All this kind of folly and foolishness going on in these so-called churches. Every day, all day. Every day, all day. But he said these people are like Sodom and Gomorrah to him. You know what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. So y'all better be careful. Continue. Verse 15, Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profane is gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision in their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said. How many times you heard these jack egg preachers talking about they I was talking to the Lord just the other day. Always hollering about what the Lord said this and the Lord said that. And they teaching you lies. The Lord ain't speaking in them. How the Lord speaking in them and they speaking against his word. They prophesy lies. They testify lies. If you ain't teaching these people to have the law and the testimony, which we read back in the law, which everything hinge on, we read Old Testament and New Testament. You got to have them both. You can't have one or the other. It ain't going to work. Jack Lee. Verse 17, they, still, they, they, still, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say to everyone that walketh after, their, after the imagination of their own heart, no evil shall come upon you. How you going to serve the Lord your way? You walking after the imagination of your own heart. Like I told you before, I'll tell you again, my opinion don't matter. All that matters is this book and what's written in this book. That's all that matters. I can't give you my opinion. I can't walk after my, oh, you serve the Lord your way, I'm going to serve the Lord my way. No, uh-uh. you going to serve the Lord his way or you ain't going to serve. And then these people will tell you, well, you know, Lord love everybody, which is a lie. I can show that to you. I can read that to you. Well, you want to, you want to, okay, you okay. You know, you can be a booty bandit and Lord still going to let you in the kingdom. You can be a dog to the Lord still gonna let you in the kingdom. You know, all that garbage. Lord let it, it don't matter, baby. It's okay. He's gonna let you in. Just ask for forgiveness. True repentance is turning from your wicked and evil ways. That's true repentance. Not being a boofoo king, purse wearing, dress wearing, San Francisco faggot, and expect the Lord to accept you. He don't accept that garbage. He showed you that in Sodom and Gomorrah. Ain't happening, Captain. And to you sisters out there, think y'all harder than, than, than the average man walking around looking with your pants hanging off your butt like these sorry dudes walking around here trying and still want to go to church and still want to say God going to be all right, okay with it. We going to see. You walk around here trying to look hard, but yet every, 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 once a month, just like all the rest of them, you leaking. 
You still got to take a squat to piss, but you try to look like a man. And you think you're going to get in the kingdom. Uh-uh. Ain't happening. Continue. Continue. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard? Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord is going forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he is executed, until he has performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it perfectly. In the last day, have we got to the last day yet? No. He coming. He coming. He said, he coming. He said, he does judge and make war. Matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, he said, he going to kill up a third part of the earth. A third part of the people on earth. He said, in the latter days, you're going to consider it perfectly. You're going to understand what's really going on. You better get yourself together. You better get it right and get it tight. Because he coming. And he ain't coming to pet and collar. I can read you another scripture saying his vesture was dipped in blood. Other scripture said the blood going to come up to the horse's bridle. You know how tall the horse is? The bridle, the thing that sticks in me. He said the blood going to come up to the horse's bridle. You better get right. Continue. I have not sent these prophets, yet they reign. I have not spoken unto them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my word, then they should have turned them from their evil way, from the evil of their doings. How is it, especially in, in, in the black community or, or the, or the or, or, the, or the Hebrew community We got churches Two or three on the same block Four or five in the same neighborhood But our Communities are steady getting worse Year by year, day by day You just read the manuscript If they had stood in the council of God And, had, and made his people to hear his word We would have turned from our evil ways But the world progressing to getting worse So I asked you Do you think God can lie? He said if they had stood in the council of God and made the people hear God's word, then they would have turned from their evil way. So I ask you, is your pastor really teaching the word of God? Is your pastor giving you all of the word of God? Because if he was, if all of them were doing it, then we wouldn't be sitting in this situation. If all of us were doing it, we would have so much foolishness going on. Because the Bible says his word would not return unto him void. It's going to accomplish that thing when he said it, and it's going to prosper in that thing which he pleaded. If they had stood in God's counsel, he, they would be turning these people from their evil way. Check yourself. Am I a God at hand, said the Lord? And not a God of all. Can any hide himself in a secret place? In secret places that I would not see him, said the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth, said the Lord. I've heard what the prophet that prophet I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Sound familiar? How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit, of the deceit of their own heart. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for by hour. The prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. He that had my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat? 
saith the Lord. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces? He coming. He coming, folks. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets that saith, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. How they steal his word? By not teaching you the whole Bible. By telling you, you know, we in a new dispensation. That those law was too heavy and too burdensome to carry. That's how they stealing the word of God. They stealing the word of God by telling you, you know, uh, the, the Passover, the feast, and all the holy, high holy days, the feast of unleavened bread, feast of tabernacle, that was for just the Jew. But tell you, you can keep Christmas. You can keep, keep Easter. That's how they stealing God's word. By not giving them to you. Continue. Behold, I am against the prophets, said the Lord. They use their tongues and said, he said. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, said the Lord. And do tell them that cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I have not sent them, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, said the Lord. God ain't sent these jokers. He ain't sent these jokers. And he said they ain't going to profit you. They tell you to get them 500 and the Lord going to bless you with 5,000. Well, that's okay. You're going to have a country full of millionaires. Because black churches deposit $30 million every Sunday, Monday morning at the church. But we yet still the poor people on, in, the, in the country, in the world. They ain't profiting you. They ain't even giving you the keys to eternal life. Cause they, they tell you to break. You can you can run free breaking all God's law, and He gonna forgive you. They ain't they ain't profiting you nothing. They ain't profiting you in this world, and they ain't gonna profit you when the kingdom come. They killing you physically, financially, and they killing you spiritually. They ain't gonna profit. He said he, they ain't gonna profit these people at all. Look at all. Look at the situation of our people. Everybody going to church every Sunday, and yet we still the poorest. We the poorest in health. We the poorest in spirit. We always looked upon and frowned upon. And that's prophecy, though. That's prophecy, and I can read that to you in Deuteronomy twenty-eight, all through the Bible, really. But definitely in Deuteronomy twenty-eight, when our forefathers first disobeyed, and Moses told us it was gonna happen to it. But even yet, still in this land. We can have peace within ourselves and definitely in between our, our families and our races. But, the, but they done stole the word. They ain't going to profit us because they done stole God's word from us. Think about it, people. Continue. Behold, verse 32. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams and do tell them and call my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet, Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Verse 33. And when this people, or the prophet, or the priest, shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. And as for the prophet, and the priest that shall say the burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. Thus saith, Thus shall ye say every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus shalt thou say unto the prophet, What has the Lord answered thee? And what has the Lord spoken? But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus said the Lord, Because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord. 
And I have sent to you saying, you shall not say the burden of the Lord. Therefore, behold now, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you, and the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. Let me tell y'all something, people. And y'all heard him say it. Especially the big pig me down there in Dallas. Potter's house. Oh, you know the Lord knew those burdens was, those laws were too burdensome for us to carry. He knew we couldn't keep them laws. That's why we are under this new dispensation. Y'all keep on saying that the word, Lord's words are a burden. He, you just read it for yourself. You just heard it and you can read it in Jeremiah 23. He said, because you say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent to you saying, you shall not say the burden of the Lord. He said, I'm going to forget you, your house, and I'm going to utterly forsake you and forget you. So everybody that think the law been done away with, everybody want to call God laws a burden. Read it yourself and see what he say. And when the Lord say he going to forget you, you, that means you go on one, you got one place you going. Lake of fire. You going to the lake with the snake. And if you can deal with that for eternity, then that's on you. That's on you. Moving on. Moving on. We going to Brother Ezekiel. We going to Brother Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. We going to Ezekiel 13 on Zeke. We going to Zeke over the 13th chapter. And we going to start in the first verse. We going to read verses 1 through 7. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Ye hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like foxes in the desert, ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Hmm. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord saith, and the Lord has sent them. They have made others to hope that will confirm the word. Ye have not seen a vain vision, and ye have not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, the Lord said, albeit I have not spoken. How many times you hear these pigmen even say, the Lord said, I was talking to God. God ain't said them, because they ain't giving you his word. Know how I know they ain't giving you his word? Because you ain't, you ain't church every Sunday. And we read, and I can read it over and over and over again. Even in the book of Revelation, which we know ain't happened yet, he said, from one new moon and from one Sabbath to another shall these people worship me. The Sabbath ain't done away with people. The law ain't done away with we, but we done been through that. But everything hinges on the law. His word, the law is his word. And they want to holler about what God and told them this, that God and told them this, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. God ain't speaking to you because you ain't giving the people the realness. You ain't coming correct. You come, you, you prophesied out of your own heart. You tell me what you, your opinion is. Your opinion don't matter. What matters is what God say. Moving on, moving on. Going to the book of Matthew. Going to the book of Matthew. Chapter 13. Going to the book of Matthew. Chapter 13. And we're going to start reading the verse 1. We're going to read two verses over here in Matthew 13. We're going to start in verse 1. We're going to read verse 1. Then we're going to skip down. Because we, we, we ain't concerned about 
you know, the 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 the, uh, the prophecy with inside this chapter. But we gonna, uh, you know, we gonna we gonna read verse one. It says, the same day Jesus Jesus, I'm sorry, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. You know what, y'all? I apologize. I said Matthew 24. I'm sorry. Matthew the 24. Matthew the 24. That's my bad. Matthew the 24, verse 1. Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Alright? And we just sitting and sitting here. This is this this is a uh, the side, this is Jesus coming out of the temple. And, uh, you know, uh, his disciples want to show him the things going on. You know, they want to add, they ask him a few things about, you know, the end of the world and, and, and when he coming back and all that. But we ain't, we ain't concerned with all that right now. We're going to skip down to verse 24. And he's, he's going to tell them about you know, what's going to happen in between the time uh, of, of the tribulation and then the time of his coming. But one of the first things he told for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's the red letters, people. The red right. That's the Messiah telling you. You know, they coming with false lies and, and false wonders. You know, people want to say, "Oh, you know, they had the statue over there. They were crying." You know, a statue of Mother Mary will cry. How did that happen? Well, he let you know. You got false prophets, and they working with the with the spirit of the devil, and they and they can do signs and wonders too. He said, because if it was possible, they would fool the very elect. But the very elect, who are the very elect? Those who know the true word of God, who know what's to come. How you know what's to come? Jesus Christ just told you there'll be many false prophets. You know, and they're gonna be saying, "Oh, that's 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 that man's holy. That's that's the Messiah." Now he said, "Believe it not." Okay. All right. Moving on. Moving on. We go on to Mark, the book of Mark. Stay in the New Testament. Flip over a few pages. We go on to Mark, chapter thirteen, and we're gonna go. We're gonna start reading in verses twenty-two and twenty-three. Mark chapter thirteen. Verses 22 and 23. And I read. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to, to, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed before I have foretold you all these things. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in the heaven shall be shaken. And them that and them and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and great glory. And then shall he send his angels, and shall gather his elect. From the four winds and from the uttermost part of the earth unto the uttermost part of heaven. So, a couple of things in there. Has Jesus come back yet? Nope. So, he ain't gathered Israel, he ain't gathered the true believers. So, once again, them, them people over there call themselves Israel? I don't think so. Because he said they want. He didn't say he's gonna gather his people together in 1948 to go back to the land, like them so-called people that's over there now. He said when he come back in great power and glory in the cloud, then he will gather his people. Okay, but he also told you watch out for them phony balonies, them false prophets, because if they will, they would deceive the very elect. And I can tell you, they done a good job because a whole bunch of people fooled. I was fooled for a long time. But partner, you ain't getting me no more. Not this one. Not me and mine. Because like, like Brother Joshua said, as for me and my house, 
we gonna serve the Lord. And I ain't talking about this 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 sun worshiping Lord, this 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 pink booty blue eyed Jesus. We worship the true and living Elohim. The one who was and is and is to come. The God of this Bible. Not that false Christianity. Moving on. We're going to Isaiah. We're going to Brother Isaiah. Chapter 56. Chapter 56. In verse 10. Isaiah 56. In verse 10. And I read. His watchmen are blind. Who are the watchmen? The watchmen are supposed to be these pastors watching over the flock of God. But he says his watchmen are blind. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. Now I didn't I didn't write that. I didn't write that. But I like that. Because it's keeping it 100. They are all dumb dogs. Now you got a problem with it? Then you got a problem with God. Because most High wrote that. He had, he had Brother Isaiah to write it in the book. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping and lying down and loving the slumber. Yea, they are all greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain. From his quarter, these joke can't have them. No, they can't, they, they they greedy, like the book say, like the manuscript say. They build these big mega churches, you know what I'm saying? And they can't ask for money. They can't ask for money. They go out and build these big mega churches, and you know, and, and they they, they constantly fleecing the flock. Churches have built for over 20, 30 years. I mean, God dog, when y'all gonna stop building? Or when y'all gonna start building with all this money y'all been collecting 15, 20 years, and all y'all did put a few lights and chandeliers on there, but y'all still got a building fund. What y'all doing with all that money? What have y'all I I know a bunch of them riding around rolling them, safe being, and then when the folk come to them need some help. Little, little help on a light bill, some rent or something, or some food. Yeah, oh, well, sister, uh, brother, uh, you know, we ain't gonna have no mooching. Uh, uh, you gotta take care of your business. What you been doing? Well, I'm telling you, they've been doing it again, giving you all their money. Greedy dog. They can never have enough. See what I'm saying? So, that's what's up. That's what's up. Alright, moving on. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and even more abundant. They, they already plotting and scheming on y'all for the next day. They sitting back drinking wine. Can you see some of these big time uh, pastors, so-called apostles, they sitting back, they talk, they getting together. And they talking about, yeah, man, it was a, we had a good Sunday this Sunday. We gonna, they sit back, they kick back drinking wine. And uh, they say tomorrow going to be better than the day they get had. Because they, they kind of coming up with a scheme to get your money. Confident. Building fun. Goliath fun. This, uh, 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 this, that, and other. Mother Day, Pastor Day, Teeth, and all that. Man, every time you, you open the door, they passing that plate. But I ain't giving you nothing about this truth and this word to save your, your eternal soul. I ain't telling you nothing about what God said. They give you a, one or two scriptures over in the New Testament. And the only time they run, run over to the Old Testament when they want to talk about tithe. Well, let's talk about the whole book. Why can't we read the whole book? Why we can't you know, go line upon line, precept upon precept like it said in Isaiah? The only time they want to run the Old they want to talk about tithe with a man robbed God. And he wasn't even talking to the people, the common people, he was talking to the priest. In Malachi, we said with a man robbed God, because the priest was kicking in and was doing what they both been doing. But we're going to read that. We're going to read that. Moving on. Moving on. All right, we're going to, matter of fact, next verse up. We're going to Malachi 1 and 6. Last book of the Old Testament. Brother Mal. Malachi 
Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. Let's go. And I read, as a son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Said the Lord of hosts. Unto you, O priest, that despise my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? He offered polluted bread upon my altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. What is he, what is he talking about? Again, he's talking to the priest. That's what the whole book of Malachi is talking about. But they want to run over there and say, In Malachi, what a man right God. When God was talking to the priest, they was taking the money and stuff that was brought into the church for the, for the, for the betterment of the flock or for the help of the, of the flock. But he said, you have, you have all the polluted bread upon my altar. What's polluted bread? The, the, the words that they're giving you. This, this spiritual food they're supposed to be giving you. But they lying and stealing and cheating and telling you false things on the word of God. Or not even preaching you the word of God. That's the polluted bread you're putting on this altar. And I can show you even in the other scripture. He said, this, the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. He said it's like smoking his nose, irritate. And what is sin? The transgression of the law. And he said the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto him. We can read that. I ain't telling you nothing you can't read. Moving on. Moving on. We're going back to my boy Jeremiah. We're going back to my boy Jeremiah chapter 10. We're going back to Jeremiah chapter 10. We're going to flip over back over here to Jeremiah chapter 10, starting in verse 20. We're going to read two, two scriptures there. Jeremiah 10 and verse 20. And I read, My tabernacle is spoiled, and all my cords are broken. My children have gone forth of me, and they are not there, and, there, and they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore and set up my curtains. For the pastors are become brutish and have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper at all and their flocks shall be scattered. The Lord said he ain't got nowhere to stretch his tent. He ain't got nowhere to, he ain't got no house for his name. But every time you turn around, this is the house of God. The most I say, he ain't got nowhere to stretch his tent. Nobody put up his curtain. What are you talking about, man? Well, if you read your book, you'll know. The tabernacle of meat, the tent of meat. That was a tent in the, in the, in the wilderness before they built the temple. And the curtain, the veil, was, was, the, was the entering of the holies of holies where the presence of God was in between the chair of angels. God said, he ain't got nowhere to stretch his tent. This ain't, that ain't God's house. God said keep the Sabbath day. Which is the seventh day. Not the first day. Think about it. Alright. Next, next, next verse. Next verse. We're going to go to. We're going to go to Hosea. We're going to go to the book of Hosea. Okay. We're going to go to the book of Hosea. Uh, Hosea chapter 4. I'm sorry. Hosea chapter 4. We're going to go to Hosea chapter 4. We're going to go to Hosea chapter 4. All right. Verses 6 through 12. Verses 6 through 12. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt bring no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Did you hear that? They have, we have forgotten the law of our God. And he said he's going to forget us. 
And he said, I was going to forget your children. So if you're not keeping the law, which is sin, he said he going to forget about you and your children. So ain't no need to get down and say, Lord, Lord, please watch over my kids. Because he said, if you ain't keeping my law, because you forgotten my law, I'm going to forget you and your children. Now we reading book here. This ain't my opinion. I'm just reading what the book say. If you got a problem with what I'm saying, then you got a problem with what God said. Because all I'm doing is reading straight out the book. I ain't putting my interpretation on it. I'm giving you straight book. Bro priest, bro preacher, bro bishop, bro deacon, bro elder. I'm reading book. That's all I'm doing. I'm reading book. As they were, verse 7, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore I will change their glory into shame. They did eat up the sin of my people, and they that set their hearts on their iniquity. And there shall be like people like priests. People like priests, you preachers. And I will punish them for their ways. And reward them for their doings. For they shall eat and ha not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase. Because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away your heart. He ain't talking about physical wine. He talking about this false doctrine. These lies they push. That's what he talking about. Whoredom, spiritual whoredom. Men going after other gods. Because God said he married the church. He married Israel. He married the church. He said, Y'all can just like whore a woman that's married going after other, other men. He said, Whore them and wine and new wine. Take away your heart. Take away God's word. Talk to the priest now. Take away your heart. Verse 12. My, my people ask counsel that they stop. And the staff declares unto them. For the spirit of whoredom has caused them to err. And they have gone a whoring from under their gods. I mean their God. Excuse me. They have gone a whoring from under their God. He talking about spiritual whoredom people. He talking about the priests. Taking advantage of people teaching them lies. That new wine. That, 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 that sitting out there sitting out, sipping out that golden cup. That that horn that sits upon many waters Pour it out And, and people drink of it Them lies, that false doctrine That's what he's talking about Christmas and Easter And sun worshiping Pig me eat All the commandments of men Instead of the commandments of God Keeping the traditions of men Instead of what God told you to keep that's what he's talking about. Continue. All right. We're going back to Brother Jeremiah. We're going to go back to Jeremiah. Line upon line, precept upon precept. That's what we do. Subject upon subject. What we talking about? We're talking about these jack -led false prophets. That's what we talking about. All right. We're going to Jeremiah 12 this time, y'all. Jeremiah 12. Jeremiah 12. And we're going to start reading at verse 10. Verse 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate. And being desolate, it also mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate. Because no man led to heart. The spoilers are come upon the high places. High places are churches. Back in the old days, they called high places churches or, 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 or places of worship. Okay, so still talking to y'all pastors. Y'all so-called pastors now. Keep it, keep it real. Keep it 100. The spoilers are come upon the high places through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from one end of the land to the other. And to the other in the other end of the land. No flesh 
shall have peace. Y'all still think Jesus come back to rapture everybody out? Or he come back, he gonna take care of business. Y'all can let them folk tell y'all them lies. That's another thing. But somebody please email me, write me, whatever, and tell me where the word rapture is in the Bible. Because I can't find it. Will somebody please email me or contact me and tell me when you read the Bible, will God take you off to heaven? I can read you time and time again. Well, he coming back. He finna deal with people. You just read it. He said the sword of the Lord is going to devour. He said it's going to be so much blood. going to look like the mountains melting with blood. I can read that to you. Till the vesture of the Lord is going to be like it's been dipped in blood. He's going to be doing so much killing. And who he going to be killing? Well, I can tell you one of these, one of the groups of people he's going to be killing these jack leg preachers that's leading the, the masses astray. The, the biggest mass murderers in, in the world is these false prophets, these false preachers. They leading thousands and millions and billions of people to the straight to the lake of fire. Biggest mass murderers in the world is these false prophets. Continue. We're going over to 2 Timothy. We're going to 2 Timothy. We've got a few more scriptures out there. We're going to go to 2 Timothy. I'm going to try to wrap it up. I don't want to keep it too long. Because I know, you know it's hard to keep people's attention when you go long. But I'm, I'm going to try to make it right. Try to keep it tight. We're going to 2 Timothy. Over in the New Testament. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. What does that mean? All in hoarding and trying to get what somebody else got. Boasters. I got five churches. Two churches. I got a jet. I got a mansion. I ain't no book preacher. I got road rushes. You hear him talking about it all the time. Got this one pig eater. Talking about he bought a $16,000 dog. Come on, man. For real? Come all the way talking about how much he got and what he got. And did the Lord bless me with this? Lord, I ain't blessed you with nothing. Okay? You serve the God of this world, which is Satan the devil. And you're going to be right there with him when it's all said and done if you don't turn from your evil ways and repent and get in line with this real word of God. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, Unthankful and holy, without natural affection, truce breakers, breaking a, breaking a peace, false accusers, lying on for incontinent, no self control, incontinent, no self control, sleeping with the sisters in the church, got babies running around the church, dead, all these little kids that you do with body women you ain't had, you ain't married to, you know, snapping pictures, got the like these little pre D Catholic preachers having sex with these little boy incontinent, no self control. Stealing the money. All kind of God is going on in these so-called churches. Fierce, despising of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Now, get this verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. God tell you, get away from them. For of this sort, are they the which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, laid away with diverse lusts? Y'all know how it is. Y'all went up into the church, want to get a little counsel from the pastor. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, he scares you a problem. Well, he said, Y'all have a special laying on the hands. Got five balls of so called holding on over there on the shelf. A man cap been busted. But he laying on hand. Yeah, he laying hand like draw drop it in the in the pastors also into most stuff. Y'all know ain't lying. You got pastors got beds all up in the churches now. What you need a bed up in the church for? Well, I know what you need a bed up in the church for. And it said, lead away silly women. Un 
unlearned women. Women that's following these false prophets and these false teachers and preachers. Silly women, give me your money. Send your donation in and get this special prayer cloth, this special bottle of holy water. It's going to bless you. It's going to do this. Hey, shut up. I get so sick of seeing them jokers on TV. I don't know what to do. I want to jab slap every last one of them. I see what I'm afraid of and lay my hands on them. And there ain't going to be no that so-called Christian laying on hand. Beat the brakes off of it. Continue. Go to Matthew 24 and 24. Let's go back and see what the Messiah had to say. Go to Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. My bad, we already read that. So we're going we gonna to move on. We're going to keep it moving. 2 Peter. 2 Peter. We're going to 2 Peter chapter, one, chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 1 through 2. How about that? 2 Peter 2. Chapter, I mean, 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 through 2. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that brought them. And upon themselves, I'm sorry, even denying the Lord that that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious, ungodly ways. That's what pernicious mean. Their, 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 uh, their lying way, lasciviousness, what that mean. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom. The way of truth shall be evil smoking, spoken of. See, they, they don't speak evil of the truth. If they gotta keep them law, that's evil. Speaking against God's word, oh, yeah, they ain't gotta keep them law. Uh, you man, just just bless that food and go and eat. It's all good. God, Jesus nailed all that to the cross. No, he didn't. We not we don't written the law. The only law he nailed to the cross was the law of animal sacrifice. You speaking evil of the truth. The truth was in his was written in his book from cover. To cover. So if you're speaking against this, you're speaking against the truth. That's the truth. And he said, these folks are going to be speaking evil of the truth. You call them God a lie. You say you ain't got to keep the law. You say you can go to church on Sunday. You say you can, you know, you can be a homosexual and still get in the kingdom. You say you can do whatever you want, butt naked and free. Screw all the women you want, screw all the men you want, whichever flavor you like, and it's gonna be alright with God. You can teach people to, to to go against the commandments of God and it's gonna be okay with him. I don't think so. Cause his word is true. And if you speaking against anything that's written in this book, then you speaking evil of the truth. If your pastor ain't giving it to you like this right here with how the book gave it to you, he ain't giving you the truth and he's speaking evil of the truth and he calling God's law the burden and we just read in, brother, in Jeremiah 23 what he said. Call my words a burden if you want to. Call my laws a burden if you want to. See where you end up at. Alright. Alright. Last verse. Last verse. Last verse. Going back to Hosea. We're going back to Hosea. We're going back to Hosea. And we're going to go to chapter 10 and verse 13. Chapter 10 and verse 13. Chapter 10. Verse 13. And I read. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. There it is. Simple and plain. Y'all ate the fruit of lies. Y'all been eating the fruit of lies. Week in and week out. I guarantee you, if you told these pastors. There wasn't going to be no benevolent offering. Wasn't going to be no love offering. Wasn't going to be no uh, 
plate passing this Sunday or for the next five Sundays, 90% of the churches will be empty that next week because they can't get paid. They can't fleece the flock. But y'all sit up on there and eat them frugal lies every week. You don't do what the Lord told you to do. Study to show yourself approved a worker that needed not be ashamed. Right leg dividing the word of truth. You ain't know what the Lord say do line upon line, precept upon precept. You let this man give you a little couple of few verses over in Paul writing a, a personal story, a seeing you to death, seeing you some song, and then y'all go back home and he give you every day you live, you getting closer and closer to the lake of fire if you don't turn and, and repent of your way and get in line with what this book say. You heard what the word said. They greedy dogs. They could never have enough. They dumb dogs that can't even bark. I didn't say it. The Lord said it. I'm riding with the Lord. So, people, you know, it's on you. It's on you. He said there ain't going to be no man without an excuse. Because he said my word has always been nigh to you. It's even, in, it's even in the hotel room when you're laying up doing the dirt. You know what I'm saying? At the high sheets motel. It's laying in that drawer up there. You know what I'm saying? And we lay in the hospital bed. It's laying in the drawer over there. Probably got four or five of them laying around your house with your baby pictures and your birth certificates in, but you ain't you ain't blew the dust off of it and ain't reading it. But you gonna simply let some man tell you his opinion or what he said. Instead of what the Lord does say the Lord. You better get yourself together, folks. This your boy T Boogie. I'll see you again next week. We're gonna have another good lesson. I hope y'all got some understanding. I hope I help somebody. And like I say, hey man, it's on y'all. It's on y'all. It's on y'all. All praise, honor, and glory due to the most high. For he and he alone is worthy to be praised. All my brothers and sisters in the faith, hey, baby, I salute you. We finna get up out of here, but look here. Check your past. Check that jack leg, man. Check it. The Bible said they miles must be stopped. I'm just doing what I'm told to do. Anybody got a problem with it, talk to my father. He the one that sent me on this mission. I'm going to holler at y'all.